Hey, how's it going guys? My name is Dom and there are six ways to improve this JavaScript code example. Now I'm gonna let you guys pause the video right here to see if you can spot those six things. And if you can't spot all of them, I highly recommend you stick around to watch today's video because you just might learn something. All right, let's jump into it. Okay, so let's begin down here where we're constructing the profile title string. So we're saying right here, name is a occupation. Very straightforward, but we can actually change this to use what's called uh, JavaScript template strings. So template strings allow us to easily inject data into a string. As an example, let's remove what we have currently for the string construction and replace this with the back ticks near the one on your keyboard. We can now make use of a dollar sign, then opening and closing curly brackets, then put inside here the name constant just like that. So now whatever name is currently equal to, that is going to be what gets put inside the string for this particular area. We can now say is a just a standard plain text. Then say here once again, dollar sign curly brackets and say occupation and then finish that off with a full stop just like that. So now we're saying name is a occupation just like we did before. If I run this code, we get the exact same results. Next up, we're going to take a look at the two constants name and occupation. So we can actually reduce these three lines here into a single line. This is done using what's called object destructuring. So we're going to remove these two name and occupation lines and hop right up to the const user line, just like this, right? We're going to replace the user here with an opening and closing curly bracket. We can now say name and occupation just like that and we even get autocorrect. So what it's doing here is basically we have this user's object or this user object on the right side. Then we're saying on the left side, let's grab the name and the occupation property from that object and assign them to the constants name and occupation so virtually what we have here is the exact same as what we had before. But of course, before the user object wasn't used in the string. So technically we could avoid declaring it. We can now run the code again. And once again, we get the exact same result. We can now move up to the for loop itself. So currently it's using a traditional for loop where you have the variable called i and it's going to increment it until you reach uh, the array length. And of course, this right here is going to allow you to run this code for every single item inside your array. Now, these are obviously, you know, they work fine, but they typically are found in older JavaScript code bases or when people come from Java into JavaScript and they use a loop like this. Now, there's actually something called a for of loop in uh, JavaScript. Um, and this right here is going to allow you to loop over iterable objects such as strings or arrays. So let's change this for loop here to make it a little bit easier to read. So let's go inside here, replace all of this with something like this. We're going to say const user of then users. So now we're saying, look, for every single user of the users array, we're going to run this code. So now we have this new constant called user and this user is every single user in the array as we loop through it. Okay, so now we can simply change this users at index i to simply just be user because now user is a single user object. Save this, run the code again, and we get the exact same results. Now we can combine what we learnt with the for loop and the object destruction from earlier on to simplify this loop even more. So we can actually move the object destructuring to the for loop itself. So we're going to copy the curly brackets here with the name and occupation and simply paste it instead of saying const user. So I'll say control V right here. Now we're saying essentially, look, for, for every single user, let's grab out the name and the occupation properties from those user objects. I'll get rid of this code right here. And now we have one line for the, uh, the same thing. So 
Let's grab the name and occupation out and put it inside the string. I'll run the code again and we get here the exact same result. So that right there is quite a neat trick to reduce the amount of constants you're defining inside the block at least, and of course, makes the code a little bit shorter. We're now gonna go higher up into the let profile titles. So, the problem with this right here is we're using let for the array. Now, you might think that, well, we're changing the array, you know, we're adding new items to it, therefore, I need to use let, but, in actual fact, you can use const here because let only refers to uh, the assignment of your variable. So as an example, uh, by using let, I can now say profile titles equals and make it a number as an example, you know, maybe a different array like one, two, three. Uh, the key part of this is I'm using an equals here to assign a new value to the profile titles uh, variable. With const, you're not allowed to do this, okay? But because we're not actually, we're not actually assigning a new uh, value to the profile titles variable, it's perfectly fine. So we're simply calling the push method on the existing array. We're not changing what profile titles is. So we can change that to be const and the code is still gonna work perfectly fine. You don't get any errors about let and const. All right, now the last part of this video, the most important part, is gonna be utilizing the array map method instead of this for loop right here. So I know I spoke about the for loop quite a bit and that stuff is still relevant, but for this example right here, we can actually avoid using a for loop. Now, as we can see here, we're defining a new array called profile titles, then we're looping through every single user and adding to that array for every single user. So we're taking each user object and we're transforming it using its own data into something else, a different representation of the same thing. There is an inbuilt array method called map, which is used for this purpose. Okay, so let's just comment out the for loop right here and we're gonna be using array map instead to achieve the same result. Let's go inside this empty array expression right here and change it to be users dot, then call the map method. Now, the map method is gonna take in a callback function. This just means that whatever function you provide to this map method, that, uh, that function is gonna run for every single item inside the array, okay? So, it's gonna have a parameter for the value. We can call this parameter user because we're looping over users, just like that. And now, we can simply return from this function. Whatever we, sorry, whatever we return from this function, that is gonna be the new value of that particular user. Okay, now, we're not modifying this array, we're simply looping over it just like this and creating a new version of the array, okay? We're transforming the data. So we can say here, return, then just say once again using the template string, okay? I'll copy this and paste it up here. Name is a occupation. Now, we're gonna need to define what name and occupation is, so we can say const name equal to user.name, const occupation equal to user.occupation once again, and now I'll remove this commented out code, I'll save it, run the code, and we get the exact same result. So we can see here we're taking every single user, okay, in the array, we're doing something and returning a new version of that user, we're transforming the data and simply placing that inside the profile titles array, okay? We have this, this, and this. Now, you may have noticed one thing. We now have to redefine name and occupation. Well, you don't actually. So you can put object destructuring inside the function parameter. Let's open up a new brace around the user, just like this, and then just once again, use object destructuring. We can say name and occupation inside the curly brackets, just like this. Then we can remove these two lines, okay? And it's the exact same result. We have name and occupation, it's looping over it, deconstructing the values, and then it's simply returning the string. So I'll run it again, and we get the exact same result. And that is all for today's video, guys. Really hope you enjoyed this one and you learned something. If you did, make sure to drop a like and subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next video.